So let's talk rejection. This is my first update of the month. Last week was BEA and I didn't have any time to write, no time to update or anything. And the week before that was basically just me getting ready for BEA. I do want to talk about rejection. And while I was at BEA, specifically on that Saturday of BookCon, I received a rejection letter. In the past when I've gotten those rejection letters, I, you know, I feel, you know, a little disheartened. And then I, you know pull it all together, and I move forward. But for this one, it was just a little bit more difficult for me because this time I got a personalized rejection letter. Now, the rejection letters I have gotten in the past from my query have been form rejections. And if you don't know what a form rejection is, I will tell you. <laughs> a form rejection is where it's kind of just a copy and paste, a blanketed rejection letter that usually is just like, nah, this isn't for me. It varies obviously agent to agent, but it's pretty obvious that it is a form rejection, that you got a copy and paste rejection form. Mostly because usually your name is an address, so they'll just say, Dear Author. There's really no way of knowing how much they read, what they read, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. On Saturday, I got a personalized rejection, and this one was really hard for me because to be represented by this agent would have been absolutely amazing. She's one of the agents I queried last month, and it was the middle of last month, and I noticed that she was getting through a lot of other queries based on Query Tracker, the website, but for some reason mine wasn't being answered, so I took that almost as kind of a good sign. Sometimes agents work out of order, which is fine, but all the other queries had answers to them on this database. I was kind of stalking but mine didn't so I thought well this could be good maybe she set mine to the side and she wants to look at it further which is a good thing and that's what actually what she said in the rejection letter is that she put mine aside because she really liked it so as I'm reading this rejection letter she said how she liked my concept she said that she thought my query letter and my sample writing were very well written but ultimately she had to pass on my query and not request additional material because she wants to keep her client list at a minimum. It was just a little harder for me to swallow that, basically because she said she really liked my writing. As helpful, I guess, as I was, it still stung. It's not like she said, you know, this isn't working, your writing is crap. Another quick update that I wanted to say is that I finally started my YA thriller. I started the YA thriller at the airport before I left for BEA and because I had about an hour to kill and I just told myself I was gonna write it and I started writing it. I got about a thousand words I think before I had to start boarding my plane. I don't want to say I like it so far because it is a first draft and I finally realized that is why I was struggling to write last month is because when I was in school I was very used to my first draft being my final draft with my academic papers. I wouldn't recommend it, but I wouldn't not recommend that. I mean, I did really well in school, so it worked for me. I'm just conditioned and used to having my first draft be my perfect draft. And I knew with when it comes to creative writing that it's just not, it doesn't go like that. And I just didn't want, I hate writing crap. and. That's what, you know, your first draft is. So I think that's why I was struggling with starting something new was because I knew it was going to be crap, but I didn't want to write crap. So it's towards the end of May, but I do have some exciting news. And that was that yesterday was Sunday and Sunday I got a request for a full. So that's super exciting. It took me about five minutes to open up the email because I was scared. <laughs> I worked up the courage to look at it and it was a request for a full. I was completely surprised and shocked and over the moon and just feeling really good about myself. Some more exciting news. Um, I was doing my makeup and everything. I'm getting ready to go to work and I did get another email from a query response and this one was also positive. This agent has requested a full. So this is my second full requested of this month. I am so pumped. The thing with this one is that I do need to send a detailed synopsis along with my full manuscript and I haven't written a full synopsis yet and I know some agents request this but I've never been requested of a 
synopsis and basically what a synopsis is it's usually between one and two pages double spaced and it's just you going through the entire book so spoilers what the ending is and everything like that so now I have to figure out how to write that it's gonna be exciting to write the story out in that way because as like my query letter is just you know a two paragraph blurb of what the story is about something commonly that you would see on you know the inside of a book the jacket or whatever this is really exciting I wasn't expecting that especially because last night I did get a rejection query from another agent that I sent it out so of these five I've heard back from four I think two rejections and two requests for a full I think I'm gonna send out five more also tonight tomorrow because um, you know I wanna always keep sending them out once I get responses back just so that it's it's still out there. It is May 31st. It is the last day of May, obviously. wanted to break it down, wrap it all up. I started my new project. I officially have three fulls out and one partial. Haven't heard back from any of them yet. I did write my synopsis. It's supposed to be one to two pages. Right now it is sitting at Three. and so I need to edit that down today which I'm gonna do and I'm gonna send everything off tonight writing the synopsis was the hardest thing I've ever done it's all too long too long too long it was an exciting May because um, you know I got requests for two fulls within one week and that totally blew my mind This is totally weird. Our electricity just went out. Well, I'm leaving in a couple minutes to go to work, so I don't have to... I don't know if I should notify someone. Okay, hi, it's night time now. So I think I got way too distracted this morning with the electricity going out and then needing to catch my bus. And then I realized when I was walking that I didn't even like say goodbye or anything, so I knew I had to make another clip. Okay, so I talked about writing the synopsis. Um, I haven't really talked about any like Thing to do with craft writing so I thought for my last clip I'd kind of you know talk about a few things. One thing I'm currently doing right now and there is a point to all of this is that I'm currently re-watching Rain on Netflix. Let's get that in there. Ooh, ooh. Got it, got it. Okay so I wanted to re-watch this just because I really liked the first season and a fun fact and here's my point, is that I watched the first season, I binge watched it while I was writing the beginning chapters of my first draft. I know that Rain is not historically accurate for the most part, but I really use the atmosphere of the court life in the TV show that I kind of incorporated that at same atmosphere, hopefully, in my Red Riding Hood story. I do have some perspectives in the princess's point of view, the prince's point of view, and the illegitimate son of the king. But I promise that character was already mapped out before I even watched Rain, Rain, so he's nothing like Bash at all. So I just wanted to kind of say like now going back and rewatching this, like I'm feeling the same like feelings I had while I was writing my first draft while watching the TV show. So I don't know why I mentioned that, I just thought I would. So then the last thing I wanted to talk about is outlining, surprisingly, because I've been wanting to mention this in my writing vlogs for like the past two months, but I kept forgetting. And since now I've officially started my new why a political thriller project I thought I would quickly touch on outlining because usually whenever I do a writing Q&A which hasn't been a lot but um, even when I've hosted uh, Twitter chats with authors usually there's always a question that gets asked of whether you outline or you're a pantser. I know everybody's different but for me if you're looking for a reference my Red Riding Hood book was the first novel that I actually outlined and I finished it. I have a lot of unfinished novels in my laptop that are not finished and guess what? I didn't outline any of those. For me, I really really love outlining and I think that helps completely. Even though I've mentioned this a lot of times that my outlines are very loose, they just kind of have pinpoints of where I'm working toward, what plot point I'm working towards next. I did participate in NaNoWriMo 2015, but I didn't 
make my word count goal of 50,000 and I feel like that's 80% of the reason why is because I didn't outline very well. Those were my parting words of wisdom I guess on outlining and in June, I can't believe it's already June, what the heck, I'm going to be really going hard on this first draft of mine because I want to have this completed. My goal is to have the first draft completed by the end of July. I'm giving myself a cushion. Eight weeks? I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching my writing vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it.